If you're listening to this, and we've literally just signed up now, uh, can you let us know if the volume's okay? We've just had a couple of issues with our microphones, but hopefully we sorted that now. So if you can just give us a thumbs up to let us know whether this is going out okay and you can hear us properly. Looking forward to this one, Joe. Yeah, I you? know. I was just um, trying to make sure I was in shots. I'm like, look, at my hair's actually creeping out the window. <laughs> <laughs> it's got that long now, it's got its own, it's, my hair's got hair. It, uh, <laughs> my hair's well, that, got its own that, hairstyle. That can happen, that can happen, no <laughs> question about it. Uh, I think we're all starting to suffer a little bit Here with hair malfunction, aren't we? But, uh, um, um, here's Gordon. Hello Gordon. Hi, Gordon. Where are you from Gordon? Let us know on there. He's asking us what's the latest news um, at Stratford Park. We'll tell you in that in a minute. Um, yeah, some good very news. Very exciting so, news from news. around the UK and the... Um, Rest the wider of, well, world, the rest really. of the UK. Um, what I have oh, heard no, not today. The UK. Well, I've heard one um, story today, which I don't know how they're going to overcome it. Uh, one golf course. Uh, nine holes are in England and nine holes are in Wales, yeah. and the, court, the course is shut. I don't know how you get around that. Well, it's totally shut, is it? Or is it's half shut. Open? No, no, it's it's shut. Um, <laughs> should it be half open? Should it be half closed? Should it be fully open? Should it be fully closed? Don't know. Tricky one, that one. I would never even heard of that type of no. venue before, so I feel sorry for those. Here's somebody yeah. giving us a little comment. Who's that? Um, oh, hello, Gordon. He's in Bristol. Hey, um, Gordon. How are you doing? I hope it's sunny down there as well in Bristol. Um, we will tell you quickly, just while we're waiting for everybody um, else to join us, is yeah. that, um, yeah, we are open for business at Stratford we Park, are. which is fantastic um, for members and guests. Um, what you do need to make sure that you do is that you book online, um, you know, just so we can um, track it. The government wants to know, um, you know, the details of who's there and all that sort of thing. Um, so if you go onto the website at thestratfordpark.co.uk um, and go onto the golf section, you can book your round of yeah, golf. Um, we're in at the weekend. I think we're full at the weekend. Oh, it's um, full. I think it's full it's through, right through to yeah, Tuesday. It's been absolutely but incre I've been up there today coaching and incredibly safe. Yeah. Uh, I've never seen so much space and nobody's uh, backing up into to each other. Yeah. Um, everybody's keeping the, mm. the right distance. I think it's, dare we say, millionaires golf out there at the moment. It's absolutely yeah. wonderful. So I think uh, it's um, yeah, it's, two, it's, it's a two ball every 10 minutes. So um, hi, I'm, Matthew. How are you doing from Gettysburg? Hey, hey how Matthew. You doing? How are you? Um, Nick Smith, we've got. Um, hey, Nick. Oh, his tea booking opens at six o'clock tonight. Oh, so to take the I can't wait. To the Get course. on the phone. Oh, Gordon. And he's, Gordon's just saying that all courses in Bristol are for members only. So there you are. You can actually drive unlimited uh, I, amount I of think distance, can't the... you, to play sport. So pop and see us at Stratford Park. Why not? Yeah, the issues I see with members only, if you've got a very big membership, then that's probably right. Uh, but places like Stratford Park have got uh, less members, which means there's more space. So... What I like about that is if you're what we would call a nomadic golfer and you're able to get out there, but you actually can't go and book onto a golf course, that seems unfair, especially with everything that's gone through. So personally, I would encourage private golf clubs to open it up to visitors. Give, give everybody a chance to have a game, if, even if it's for half a day or something like that. Just mm. give, give everybody a chance to have a game of golf. God, we, yeah. we've, we've struggled everybody enough Well, it's it gone absolutely. So, well, yeah. I mean, we'll touch base with um, the status as what's going on at the minute. Yeah. Just a couple of shout Hi, outs. We, um, yeah, so we've got Gordon in Bristol. Uh, Nick, who's taking the easy swing to the course tomorrow. We've well got done, David Nick. Niburn. Um, David he's saying, I. thank you. Your videos have helped me tremendously. That's great. great. And then uh, Dom P from the United States, New Jersey. Oh, wonderful. Hi. When do we doing? get an invite over? <laughs> oh, and Kent. We'll come to you in a minute. Kent's online Oh, as well. brilliant. Hey, Kent. Stay How with you us. Doing? So just to refresh you and um, let you know what's coming up today. So hi, welcome. It's Thursday at five o'clock here in the UK. Beautiful sunny day yet again. What's coming up in the show today is that we've got questions submitted from Canada, the USA and India. Uh, we're going to be addressing things like the forward press, um, distance as well, the yeah, ever distance. important um, thing that we all want to achieve is distance. Yeah. And then um, triggers on the backswing. So those are the ones that we know about. And then, of course, there's you guys online that, uh, that we don't know about. And then coming up at the end, we are going to announce the winner of last week's competition. And uh, another one. And give you another one as well. Yeah, perfect. But yeah, everybody's going to be too busy on the golf course now to do these They'll things. They'll all be booking that. in now and doing the golf. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be 
too busy on the golf course. And um, yeah, so we've got some new people joining us today, um, been helped by Brian before. So oh, brilliant. the Sorry. format of today is that we'll be done by absolutely 40 minutes um, at the latest. We're going to take some Q&A, so please post in your questions. We can deal with most of those as we, as we go along. Competition at the end, but we're going to, um, and then just some chat about the latest golf news and, um, and talk about stress. Yeah. Yes. Well, or I not think stress. Hopefully, we're be. all a little bit less stressed than we were if you're not oh. under too much yeah. pressure work wise. But I think people are under stress in a different way. Yeah. Uh, but what Good. we don't want to do is take that to the golf take course because that that's going to yeah. ruin your so golf and then got, you get more stressed. Yeah. So we've got some so, tips on that as well. Yeah, so but right. let's kick off with the first question that we've had submitted from Lauren in Wyoming from the USA. Hey, Lauren. Um, started off by saying, please allow me to say that I truly enjoy watching your videos. So thank you very much. That's great. Thank you. And I've been trying to implement what, um, what they've been seeing in practice, which is yeah. great. Um, so he references actually your first one of your first videos of the year um the fast and effective golf warm-up of january 29th yeah. um and he mentions about you going into more detail regarding the forward press mm -hmm. um so can you just talk a little bit about that please i can he indeed he, he admits that he hasn't looked at all your videos That's, so please well, just I don't blame you some of them uh, <laughs> some of them could go there's 154 and, uh, on there I t what, I, what i do find amazing joe uh, about the videos that i put out there anytime i put a distance one out there loads of views any time I put a short game one out there or a chipping or a putting uh, drill, hardly any views. So it's obviously everybody's <laughs> really interested in hitting the golf ball as far as they can. Yeah. Um, right, so the forward press, the forward is it press. important? I, I have to say I've had loads of comments on this. I have covered this before on a previous video, but it's, uh, you know, if you've missed that one, let's cover that again. Um, if any of you've watched me hit some golf balls, you may notice that I do have a slight forward press before I start the golf swing. I've done that since I was eight years old when I first picked up a golf club. Don't know I do it and definitely don't want to stop it. Now, my other question is, is it a good thing to do? It's not the worst thing you can do, that's for sure. What we, what I would say is, incredibly difficult is to start from a static position. If you're over the golf ball and you, you try and start the golf swing without any kind of um, trigger, it's really, really difficult. Now, personally, I have a little forward press. My hands go forward. They almost come back to where they were and then the club starts in motion from there. Um, if you looked at Gary Player, he had a little thing with his knee that used to kick in and then off he goes. Some of these, uh, I don't know if you've seen any of these really long hitters on there. Very rarely would you see them very static over the ball there. They're almost in motion, right, I'm off off and going. Um, you know, if you were playing baseball, for instance, you wouldn't be, you wouldn't be just taking this back. There'd be kind of an offset and, and then a movement. So it's actually quite a natural thing to do and there's no right and wrong thing that you should be doing. So my, mine happens with my hands. You might feel it with your, your knee. You might have a little funny hip movement and then go that way. You might have a little sway this way. If you think of Henrik Stenson, almost sets into his right side and then gets going. Um, so there's no one way of doing it, but it, I would say it's not the worst thing to, to do. And, you know, I keep saying this all the time, but video yourself. Uh, but if it's, let's say, if it's a bad start to the golf swing, then you might need to do something about it. The only way you're going to know whether it's bad is you probably, you need feedback. So you need to see it or send it through to us. Let's have a look at it. Make sure that you're doing it correctly. Um, because I definitely wouldn't want you to... Um, dare we say, stay forward in the backswing because that's not going to be that good. So if, you, if you've if you got a little move forward and then you stay there, that's not going to be very helpful for your golf swing and for your consistent ball striking. So yeah, it's really important to, to, to have a trigger, but it doesn't matter where it is and then get your body turning and weight shifting correctly. Mm -hmm. Do you know, I've just gone into really nerdy engineering mode, being the engineer that I am. Yeah. And um, if you think about when you try and um, move something, that's called static friction. Yeah. So I think probably what you're doing there is overcoming that static get friction. You know, like, say if you want to ratchet something, yeah. it takes a bit of pressure to get it moving. Yeah. So you could just be coming over that yeah, static like yeah. friction. You engineers. There we are. We've always I know. got a technical <laughs> thing for it, and we're trying to get away from that. <laughs> I know, absolutely. I know, yeah. Um, Brilliant. I know, sorry. Um, so uh, we've got hello John from uh, Dallas in Texas. Oh, How hi are you John. Today? Oh, man, I've heard I what I follow a program on tele called Fast and Loud, and apparently that's in Dallas. I'd love to come <laughs> to it's Dallas. There, isn't it? I thought yeah, that. Yeah. I love, uh, Oh, I'd John, let us know that. if the, you've ever heard of that garage. What's it called? Uh, Gas Monkey. Oh yeah, Gas. <laughs> 
Just entertaining. Great what on earth? We've no watched, muscle cars. watched far too much of that, I think. Um, and then Brian Watts has played this morning. Oh, but hi, Brian. Gore, Gore how are you Hi, Brian. How are you? So um, we are back playing golf, which is great. So um, yeah, let's let's keep it keep up the momentum. I think with that. Yeah. Um, next question is from Frank, um, and he's over the pond in Canada. Um, he says, "Hello, Frank. How are you?" Um, and then um, he started talking about the backswing. So he said, um, "Do you have a trigger that starts your backswing, um, and do you recommend that we have one?" Um, Similar line. It of thought, really I would does say. come on to the same thing as having uh, an initial. For me, a forward press, a little kickstart, yes. But let's say you don't have one, and you are one of the very few people who could start the got the the, the swing from a static position. What what was the engineering term? Um, static yeah, friction. Yeah, static friction. That yeah. So you know, friction ultimately is, is going to stop you doing something. But let's say you don't have one, but you want to start the backswing correctly. The first principle of the what we coach is turning. Now, actually starting from the ground upwards. A lot of people think that the turn comes from the shoulders or the arms, but actually it starts a lot lower than that. It actually starts down at your feet, at the ground. We're gonna use the ground to help us start. So I would say everything is turning initially rather than um, trying to start it with the shoulders or the arms. And you could talk to quite a lot of pros out there and you go, can you demonstrate to me a one piece takeaway? So one piece is, uh, is what they deem as everything moving together. So I had a, a quite a, a nice discussion, slightly heated maybe with a pro. And uh, I, I, he said, you have to have a one piece takeaway. He says, well, show me a one piece takeaway. So quite rightly, he stood over the golf ball and this was his one piece takeaway. So he started everything with the shoulders, so everything remained static. So I then said to him, Let, if I show you two takeaways, tell me which is one piece and what is two piece. So the first one, I went like this. I just held the club up here and I went, this one or this one? And there's no argument, is there? If I move everything, that is one piece because it's one. But if I separate my, my upper body from my lower body, I'm now getting mismatched throughout the swing. So what a true one piece is everything working together. It's one. That has to start from the ground upwards, not from the top down, or dare we say from the shoulders down or the arms down, because this, is, this isn't one. And that's straight away that's building up tension in the swing. I can already feel it in my hips and I've hardly moved the golf club. So let everything move together. You'll turn better, your weight shift better. It'll give you more time to hit the golf ball. You'll hit the ball further because you've got more width to your golf swing. So one is everything, isn't it? It's not just a segment of the, uh, of the body. So quite passionate about that. And by the way, this pro, when we discussed it, he then did it and God, he couldn't believe the difference in his ball striking. He suddenly felt that he got much more time to hit the ball. So yeah, well worth doing. If you don't do it, video yourself and, and have a look back on it and see if you're doing a one piece takeaway, if, mm. uh, if that's what we want to call it. Do you know what? I just get lost in what you're, what you're saying. Come <laughs> on, get with it, get with it. How's your hair, by the way? It's, it's kind of a bit wonky today, but it's okay. It's life. <laughs> <laughs> he let me loose on his hair again. Whoopsie. <laughs> uh, he won't let me do that again. Robert says, um, hello, Julian and Joe. Um, have you some more stretches for us? We'll come back to that in a minute, I think. <laughs> we might be able to fit something in. Um, Gordon just popped up on the YouTube here saying, would him. you recommend a practice swing before um, hitting the ball? Um, I have, Could that be a I trigger? Have, um, yes. Would you recommend that? Yeah. Um, I have two schools of thought with regards to practice swings, which you could then put down to a pre-shot routine. When I'm in flow, when I've played some of my very best golf, and I stand over the ball, I sometimes don't even feel I need a practice swing. Because I'm, I'm in the flow, I know exactly what I'm doing, and, and off I go and, and generally make a good shot. But sometimes you might need to rehearse a swing if you're doing something different to normal. Um, so I would say be in the moment and do what comes naturally rather than going, oh, I'm ready to, so, oh, hang on, I've got to stand back and now I've got to have another practice swing. Then you might have just lost that, that moment then. So I would highly recommend that you, you be in the moment and do what you feel is right rather than going, oh, the textbook says I have to do this. Well, 
not not necessarily true. Um, I, I have quite a lot of fun when I go and play golf on my own. Sometimes I like to take just one club, and I and I can be I can go round eighteen holes in around two hours uh, on my own because I'm not thinking about it and I'm in, I'm in the moment. I'm playing golf. I'm striking it well. I don't need all the other interference which again can cause golfers an awful lot of problems so i would say go with your gut feeling if you feel you need one have one if you don't crack on yeah yeah it also helps speed up play of course yeah absolutely <laughs> i think what you don't want to be doing is having 10 practice rings and getting really confused by it all mm. uh, not, not it's good. such a game of um variability isn't it golf it is yeah it's games it's, it's not a, it's I love definitely that not a game of consistency definitely not a game sure. of consistency yeah. people always email you don't they saying how do i become a more consistent golfer and you're always reminding people actually it's not the golf that can be consistent sometimes it can but it's more about the mental approach that needs to remain consistent doesn't it yeah. so mentally you're staying stable whether you hit nice a good shot or even when you know when you hit a bad shot or even when you hit a good shot because it's equally as bad to get overexcited. You know, we will probably have those great shots and the next one's been rubbish. So Fab the, fabulous story it's about, about the Watson, keeping, yeah. keeping stable mentally, yeah, really. Yeah. What, what, what you don't want is too high and too low. Yeah. The more level you can be, the better. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, what and that's proven. About, what are you going to say about Bubba Watson? Uh, but Bubba Watson, when he won the Masters, when he that incredible hook shot out of the woods, um, Joe had Miss America come over uh, and do a talk and her husband was really good friends with Bubba Watson's caddy and he was telling us a story that uh, before the Masters when Bubba won it um, he'd been having some mental uh, coaching and what, what they discovered is he was too high and then too low mm -hmm. and they trained him to stay level. I didn't know all this, uh, I was only told after the event. But I've watched that back and throughout the, the, the tournament he was very, very calm. Only when he held the winning putt did he burst into tears and or, you know, all the emotion came out. But throughout that tournament, he was very calm. Whether he's kept that going, I don't know, but it's, it certainly worked for him. And you know, generally, when you hear people saying, I'm in the moment, uh, they're really focused on what they're doing. You don't, you don't want two ups and downs. Or if you do go up, come down pretty left pretty quickly. Mm. Uh, you don't want to get too excited for too long, that's for sure. There's, the, um, there's a really, really good model um, about flow when you're getting in flow, and it's by um, a Czechoslovakian guy, forgive me, with a really big, long name. But if you Google flow um, by a Czechoslovakian um, academic, you'll see a model which talks about when you're getting flow, when you're really just not thinking about anything else, when you're just totally lost in it, you're mm. totally oblivious to anything else. But it's really just um, nice to know that that place does exist. Yeah, not definitely. going to exist all the time, is it? it? You know, There's some great TED nicer. Talks on that as well, aren't there? Yeah, there is, yeah. yeah Blimey, probably. you can tell we've been off, like reading and writing and learning, haven't you? We've got a head full of stuff that we just need to share. So, um, yeah. Um, another question from... Um, it's really difficult to see in the sunshine, I'm afraid. Um, from Kent um, Jacobson. Hello, Kent, again. Um, he's saying, have you got any um, drills to help the right finish position? Any drills to yeah, help the right, to finish, help the right position. finish position? Um, yeah. I'm not sure there is a drill where you can constantly end up there, but what we encourage people to do is, first off, you've got to know what the right finish looks like. Um, so in our case, if I do this pointing towards the camera, your weight will have moved forward. That's me just breaking the radiator. <laughs> so my weight will have moved forward. So I've transferred my weight. I'll be fully turned. And what you might see here is my shoulders and my hips are pretty level and my head's um, facing where, where the target would be. So I would say I'm very much kind of here once I've finished hitting my shot. So up here, in head down in these positions, that's already putting me under a lot of strain from there. So the first thing I would say is let's feel what a good finish uh, feels like. You, obviously you can't see yourself, but you can feel where you should be from here. Now let's say we get it wrong and we've played the shot. What you should always do is put yourself back into this good finish again. Because if you don't, if you're not training your brain to finish well, you'll never go there consistently. Uh, and what, what you might see from here is pretty much all my weight is on my left side, facing target, nice and level. So I've got no strain on my back whatsoever. And I'm in that good position. So I wouldn't say there's drills to keep finishing there, but make sure that you keep can finishing you, in good. Can you just movement. hold that finish then? Yeah. Can you just hold that finish? Okay, so that. You can take a still now of that finish, would you yeah. say? Is that a good idea to yeah. take a still of that finish? So yeah. look where his arms and legs are. Reason why um, I'm sharing that with you is that then that can give you an idea of the stretching exercises that you need to do. So if you're in this position 
and this is hurting down here, you need to Google some stretching exercises for your mm, hip flexor. Yeah, that's true. Or for your ankle, you see where his ankle's up there? Sometimes we have people that can't get their ankle quite up there, or his arms and his shoulders down here. So yeah. take a nice little still if you want to, or play the video later on. Take that, try and get yourself into that position. And where you won't be able to is where you're tight and where you need to do your own stretching. Because mm. um, mm -hmm. last week, um, I'm, I, we did some stretching exercises, which I put a disclaimer out. I said, I'm not a yoga teacher. I'm not a qualified instructor. Do your own uh, research to find out what's best. And I still maintain that. You know, some stretches will work for you. Some won't. You know, if you've got bad backs or bad legs or bad hips, you need to find the own ones that medically work for you. Because what we don't want to do is, is, you know, get yourself injured. So do a little bit of your own research and find the ones that work well for you. We yeah. can recommend some, but it's always good. That finished position is a great model to have a look at, see where your tension is, and then you can design um, your mm. own um, activities. I think for we you. had a, an email from Rex, was it? A uh, lovely right, yeah. email, very, very constructive yeah. email, uh, talking about you know leaning forward and the lower lumbar spine. Mm. Uh, really, really appreciate the fact that you took your time to do that, and we totally uh, take on board. Because everybody's said. totally different, they you are. know. So we don't want you injuring yourself or straining yourself. Um, if we get time later, I might show you a little one that you can do um, relatively safely. But that I think is a good way of knowing what the benchmark is, finding where your tension points are, and then you can develop your own stretching activities um, yeah. throughout the day. It's a good, good place to start. In fact, is it Rory McElroy that was taught from the finish backwards, wasn't it? I said it was. that before, but yeah, yeah, it's taught to stick a finish. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, next question is from our friend um, in India. Uh -huh. And um, we've had a couple of questions pop up as well about distance. So yeah. um, he's saying, thank you for your videos. Again, once, a once again, it's changed his golf swing and he feels more relaxed. So that's great. Well done. Good. And uh, he's playing golf for around a year. But since he's moved to the easiest swing, he's losing distance from yeah. around about 240 yards, 260. Okay. And he's wanting to know why. And we've had another question similar to that as well on the YouTube. Why, why um, am I today. losing distance? Yeah. Okay. Well, the first, the first thing that uh, I would encourage you all to do is to get the shape of the golf swing right for you. Uh, so sticking to the six principles that we like to see, which is turning the body right and left, weight shifting right to left if you're right-handed, um, rhythm, coordination, balance, and suplesse. So let's get the shape of these things right. So if I, um, I'm gonna flip this upside down in a second, but I'll start from here. So the first movement is turn, weight shift, turn and weight shift through impact, coordination, so everything's working together. I'm not going forwards and, and going backwards in this way. So make sure that you're coordinating the swing. You want good rhythm. You know, we want that lovely smooth rhythm in there. We want that balanced finish, because if you're in balance, you're generally going to hit the floor far more consistently. And suplex is being relaxed and supple. Now, what we find people do is they get the motion, but they don't have the speed. Um, so we want a little bit of acceleration down here. Remember, if you've got body mass and club head speed working together, that's going to massively benefit your golf swing. But what we find people do is they get the shape, but they forget to add a little bit of impetus through impact. They don't put that little bit of acceleration in there. So if I just flip this upside down, hopefully you'll hear it, but what it wants to do is come in around here. So we need a little bit of speed here. We don't want it to all be the same speed. And what I would say people get this slightly wrong is they, they match all this, the, the kind of the club head up with the body and they don't have that little bit of acceleration through impact. So we turn well and we just put a little bit of speed in through the bottom. I'm not hitting the ball harder. I'm definitely not gripping it tight because the tighter I, I grip it, the slower it goes. If I can grip it nice and light, I will, act, I will have natural speed, but make sure you're putting that little bit of impetus in here. A little bit of speed down the bottom. Try not to make it all one uh, movement. Um, there isn't quite the room in here to do it properly, but I would also recommend that you do that with a driver, because it makes a bit more of a whooshy sound, hover it off the floor a good 18, well, 30 centimeters, 18 inches, something like that, hold it off here and get that lovely whooshing noise. Uh, it's just wind resistance against the grip. If you're hardly hearing anything, then we you can definitely start to increase the speed. 
What I like about this is keep it really light. So if you turn the club upside down, this is a really light thing now and you can move it quicker. If you've got another thing to think about, if you've got really heavy golf clubs, uh, people say, that, you know, do, does graphite hit the golf ball further than, than steel? Graphite on its own doesn't hit it further than steel. The fact that it's lighter means you can move it quicker, which will actually send the thing a bit further. So if you've got really old golf clubs, steel shafts, heavy heads, you're not going to be able to move those very quickly. It's a bit like trying to swing a sledgehammer instead of a stick. You know, stick, you're going to move quicker. Sledgehammer, yeah, it's got more, more weight, but it actually, you can't get it moving very quickly. So um, also, yeah, it's well worth checking to see whether your clubs are suited to you. And, mm. um, you know, we, we've had Bob who come over mm. for, a, for a fitting, and mm. uh, I mean, he's just gained incredible distance, but the clubs are now right for him, and uh, they are lovely and light, and, mm. and they're, they're really benefiting mm. him. So um, I would, but make sure you've got that little bit of whoosh Com um, combined with good body movement, good turning and good weight shift. A bit like punching. If I was to just punch using my arm, I can get some speed, but if I can get everything behind it, I'm going to get a little bit more, more out of it. So remember, we need a little bit of club head speed down here, not force, don't, and God, whatever you do, don't try and work on the lag to get more speed. If you work on this lag, you'll go slower, I'll almost guarantee it. Unless you're a real uh, classy golfer, you know, probably a very low handicap golfer, they might do that. But if you're relaxed, you'll have natural lag anyway. So don't try and create this, because you'll build up the tension, you won't release the club face, you'll hit the ball out the corner, probably shank it, um, and you, yeah, you'll just hit it terrible. So don't try and create lag for more distance. You just don't need to do it, keep it relaxed keep that body moving, but put a little bit of speed in where it matters, mm. yeah. The, the key is impetus, not force, isn't it? Absolutely, impetus, not, force. not force. Speed, impetus, yeah. not force, there's a difference, isn't there? Absolutely. Because you were saying that you've been watching people going out um, playing over the last couple of days, because you're back coaching now. Yeah, it's well, been great. Well, that. <laughs> he came back today, he was like a new man, oh, my life. Yeah, um, yeah I know um, that you know that he lights up when he's coaching, but that has been amazing today. Yeah, um, being I, I just, I've watched a few people mm. teen off and, straight away goes into, t into all, f all force, no real technique. And the biggest thing that I see is people back here hitting their shots. I think it's just the worst thing that you can do. You're gonna hit the ground before the ball, you're gonna to top the ball, you probably hold the club face open and get those horrible blocks or whip the hands over, get a horrible hook. Uh, from there, just, just poor weight shift, but you know, they're all trying to hit it off this back foot. It's just mm. terrible, learn to transfer your weight properly and turn, don't tilt. It's you know, terrible because before, they could tilting be doing, is it's, disastrous. It's terrible for them because they could be, you know, through they could an, be very good. using this methodology, yeah. you know, would make it so much easier. Um, for them, you know, it? some people don't care. <laughs> no, well, I'm not bothered, I just want to go and play golf. Cool. It's nicer to play golf well than it is to play it, you know, really, really poorly. So mm -hmm. it's worth having to think about it. You mm -hmm. don't necessarily have to go and, uh, take lessons. I mean, we had a great uh, email this week of, uh, of a gentleman who's, who's played some of his best golf because um, he's now, he learned the method off YouTube. So, mm. you know, it's working great yeah, for him. That's right, yeah. Yeah. I mean, going back to the clubs, I find it completely astounding when people try those exios about how little force and balance these clubs mm. are. I mean, Bob sent us a lovely testimony, didn't he? He just said they're a game changer. He's hitting the greens in regulation, which he wasn't before, and there's no force. So, Equipment is really important as well, isn't it? You yeah, know, I mean, definitely. It's incredible definitely. watching people hit the balls with these um, clubs. Um, but one more question from the floor. Um, Ooh, sorry, lovely. from the floor. <laughs> There's nobody here. Um, yes. uh, apart from you guys uh, listening to us virtually. But David Niven has said, um, my easiest swing shot goes high with too much loft, but not long. Mm. What do I do? I'd almost guarantee that you're not doing it correctly. It sounds very much to me like you're getting a little bit here through impact. If you, if you look at the stripe on my top, I always find this quite helpful when golfers, by the way, if you ever come for a coaching session where they put a stripy top on, it really helps me. <laughs> um, if you've got a stripe on here, you can see now how this goes up. So if I physically, let's say I've got a drive in, I'm gonna come in a bit closer, let's get there. So if I physically lean back, what's happening to the loft of my golf club? Uh, so now it's my driver's probably gone to something like a seven iron loft. So all you're going to do is send it up in the air and it won't go very far because there's no real mass behind the golf ball. So I would almost guarantee though that you're going this way 
and not this way. You need to turn, then you get the correct loft. So if I, if I just demonstrate this with my hand, so my hand now is nice and straight. If I tilt, now my hand's starting to point towards the sky. So it goes up and it probably goes out to the right a little bit. So if I turn my body, I'm now bringing this back to where it was when it started moving through this way. You'll get the correct loft, you get more distance. So mm. I'll almost guarantee you won't be turning, you'll be tilting. Yeah. Tilting's not good. Have and a go, David, way, let us know. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, go I've go got the t-shirt, I used to do it all the time, so yeah. uh, thankfully I don't do it anymore, but uh, nice. yeah, it's not good. I mean, we have, um, we have. I mean, I said we we're going to do a little um, thing on stress just to remind you about it, but what we have noticed is um, since people have been out, out playing golf again this week, is that people have been really relaxed, they've been really joyful, <laughs> they've been really smiling. Not like they are, sometimes you, they are and they aren't, but we've noticed a lot no, of joviality, a lot of fun, a lot of real gratitude to be back playing golf. And mm. I think if you play with that, start with that mindset, it can't do you're more any likely harm, to can enjoy it, it aren't can't you, really? No more. guarantee. But definitely a change in people's attitude. They're, you know, they're not like, oh, you've nicked my tea time. Now it's like, oh, great, I get to go out and play golf now. <laughs> That's so. right. Yeah. Yeah. I told them all, this is how we want you to be every time that you come and play golf at Stratford yeah, Park. Too um, so we're hoping that they will. Sure. Um, but we did a bit of research on stress and we thought, well, we'll actually give you a definition of what stress is. So you, if you ever get to this point, you'll know. But some of the um, definitions are um, stress is actually pressure or tension exerted on a material object. So <laughs> that's a bit like, yeah, <laughs> or a exactly, target. Exactly, yeah, put yeah. that pressure on yourself. Um, words that are very similar to stress are uh, worry, anxiety, nervousness, difficulty, suffering, pain, grief, hassle. That sounds like a round of golf. <laughs> Some people might describe golf a bit like that, uh, wouldn't they? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the thing is to really take notice of the words that you're using because um, words have a habit of like becoming you, not always, but you tend to take ownership of the word, whichever you're using. Yeah. So we're not, we don't need to become the thought police, but just have a think, which led me to this um, book that I've read some time ago, which is really, if you're into this sort of stuff, it's really good. I don't think you can see it, but it's called Notes on a Nervous Planet. And, um, and I just, it, it, looks, it looks like I'm doing a preacher, I don't know. Um, it, I just came randomly to this page, didn't I? I was like, right, Julian, I wonder what's in here. And um, the page is 121, it's how to be happy. And it said, uh, don't compare your actual self to a hypothetical self. Mm. Um, don't drown in a sea of what ifs and don't clutter your mind by imagining other versions of you in parallel universes. This is our favourite, isn't it? which is from Theodore Roosevelt, which is comparison is the thief of joy. Wonderful. Stop comparing your little golf swing to a pro's, an elite golfer's golf swing. Which is your book bear, isn't it? Don't, oh, it's so annoying. <laughs> Don't um, do it. And, and the thing is, you pick up Golf Monthly, Golf World, Golf Digest, whatever, strike the ball like a tour pro. Don't even think that you're going to strike mm. the ball like a tour pro because these guys are elite. I can't go, I can't run uh, under 10 seconds for 100 metres. So I might have good technique to run under metres, but I'm still not going to do it in 10 seconds or, or nine and a yeah. half seconds, whatever Usain did. Um, so it's a, I love this saying, comparing mm. yourself to a tour pro is a fool's errand. Yeah. Don't do it. They're, yeah. they're elite people. Uh, they get trained every day to do their mm. sport incredibly well. Uh, you know, they're pretty gifted as well to do what they do, but you can't believe the amount of work that they put in. Their, their diets, their training, mm, yeah. their, their mental side, their, their um, drive think, yeah. to do these things. And they put their bodies through hell, just like these mm. you know, top elite sportsmen who have to go in a blooming ice bath all yeah. the time. Are you gonna, are you prepared, if you're no. prepared to do that and you want to go down that route, Go for yeah. it. You know, if you're good enough, go for it. But the majority just want to go out there and have more fun. Yeah, enjoy our golf, uh, and, yeah. and not hurt ourselves. Mm. So, you know, just try it. Well, he doesn't do that because he, he, he mm. arches his wrist, whatever. Well, he's quite unique. Don't, you know, don't try and copy it. It's just mm. stupid. Work on good methodology. Work on your swing, isn't it? Your swing, your body. Sure, your own it. Yeah, that's it. So comparison is a thief of joy. And then I just happened to then just flick randomly to another page. Um, how to be happy, page 110. Uh, number one is what? Don't compare yourself to other people. <laughs> okay, cool. What's number two? <laughs> <laughs> Don't compare yourself to other people. <laughs> and it follows through. Number three, how to be happy. Don't compare yourself to other people. Brilliant. So the easiest Brilliant. swing is all you, about finding you? your own swing, isn't it? Your yeah, own just, relaxed just work swing. Out. If you apply the principles, your swing will look like your swing. We're not trying mm. to get you to look like us. 
uh, which is what I would say most me methodologies do out there. You know, you have to look a certain way. We just want you to apply the six principles. Then if you do that well with very little tension, you're going to move as well as you can. Uh, that's all we're trying to do. We're not trying to put you in a box where you look like everybody else because that's not how this works. Yeah, that's no, right, just yeah. turn well, shift your weight mm. well. We, are, we added a little bit of passion there to that, didn't we? We, we added did a bit it. Of, yeah, I got, got a bit energy. Bit. You, you got, got a bit all fired no, up then, didn't you? It just annoys me Ooh, when, uh, when, when people go for a lesson they're compared to a world-class tour pro. Uh, you know, I, I've heard loads of stories where people have gone a lesson, there's another person next to me, it might be anyone else, Tiger Woods, whoever, you don't look like this person. Well, funny that, because I'm only five foot and I've got a big belly because I like eating. <laughs> so, I mean, you can't compare yourself to these no. people and the pros who do that it's just a, unfortunately it's a joke in my opinion don't do it it's yeah, terrible don't do it find your own easy relaxed swing um, we're going to be closing in a few minutes aren't yeah, we I so uh, just before we close I know we've got some shout outs here with some questions perhaps I think we're going to have to get to those next time uh, but from uh, Pinehurst um, oh, NC nice. hello how are you hey uh, David Niven said, thanks very much. And uh, we've got Frank Samet as well there. Hey, Hello. He said, thanks. That's great. Some good, honest coaching there. And, um, oh, Steve. Oh, Steve Wesley. Hey, oh. Steve. Oh, <laughs> Hello. Today, he was a real Brilliant. person as well, wasn't he? Yeah. Oh, and there's a dog joining there's as dog well. Joining uh, he Steve. really enjoyed today. It was so enjoyable. Loved it, Steve. Yeah, Brilliant. he's been having some Brilliant. coaching today, hasn't he? Oh, it's been great having Didn't you Didn't see you today, Steve, but um, nice. That and by the way, it, it great today. He moved really, really well. So yeah. dead chuff with that. Did some good work with him today, yeah. didn't you? So well done. Uh, right, okay. So uh, last week's competition winner is, we need a drum roll, don't oh, we? Yes, da, da, da. is. Drum roll, please. The competition was, what was it to do again? It was to balance a club on your foot for 30 seconds and That's send right. in a video. Yeah. Um, and we had a very successful person who won, and yeah. his name is. <laughs> his name is Colin. There he's online. Ken Jacobson, isn't it? Ken yeah, Jacobson, so well done, who Ken. did online. it? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, sent the video. So, I've actually seen the real footage. Yeah. So, congratulations, we did. Kent. You've now got an hour's. Uh, FaceTime, Skype, Zoom lesson with me anytime you like. Yeah. Uh, so just drop us a message again and we'll get that booked in and uh, see if we can help you with your golf swing. I haven't seen you swing the club, but you're very good at balancing. Yeah. So <laughs> well, part of it's going to be good. I'm um, hoping that you can have time to do the next little competition. Now everybody's back golfing, aren't they? Yes, Hopefully you can definitely. get on your course and go and play some real golf. I'm but, just wondering right. whether I use a short club. I can. I, hopefully I can do this, but now I've got a small head, so I've now got an excuse. Please do not wreck um, the radiators or the keyboard or or the light or anything. Yeah, I'll try not to with this one. Yeah, don't uh, do this is a little <laughs> bit more difficult than some of the other ones, but perseverance will get you there. So the first one was bouncing the ball on your club 10 times, mm -hmm. which was one. The second one was balancing a club. This one is actually bouncing the ball and then getting it to stop on the club face. I will, I'll use a proper oh, club. It's just showing off now, sorry Ready? about that. So uh, <laughs> you can bounce it as many times as you want to, but all you've got to do is get it to stop on the club face without bouncing and hold it for 10 seconds. Uh, so this will test your concentration. Uh, have a go at that one. If you can do that, send a video in. Uh, again, we'll, we'll give you an hour's uh, free coaching online if you can't get over, or if, you can, if you're in the UK, come over and, and have a session with me. So it'd be great. So that's your challenge for this week. Um, <laughs> can, I, can we just remind you, we keep forgetting to say this, but can I just remind you to, um, if you like the videos, give us a thumbs up or, or send us a little comment. But if you, uh, there's a, a little bell on YouTube, which is a subscribe button. If you press the bell, it sends you a reminder. It doesn't cost a penny. They're not trying to take money off you. It's just a reminder that these videos are gonna come out and they'll ping you an email and say, you know, we're going live. So uh, just subscribe to the channel. It doesn't cost any money, I promise. Uh, it's just literally click the button and then they'll um, they'll send you notifications and that helps us and if you've got people who, who need help just point them in our direction in terms yeah, of the like channel and you know send them, let them have a look at the videos and we'll see if we can help them you know we want to yeah. make golf more fun not to, not elite yeah that's right yeah. Uh, David um, David Wilkin has just got in from work he says hi Joe and Julian hey David how <laughs> you doing <laughs> I must just say a quick <laughs> shout out to a really good friend of mine who's uh, who's not feeling that great at the moment is Dale Concanon. Uh, just sending you all our love. Uh, we're thinking about you, mate. Yeah, he's having a, having a tough time, I think. Yeah. Um, 
I hope you've enjoyed it today. We'll be back again next Thursday, five o'clock. Um, it's going to be our regular time slot, isn't it? Um, that's gonna, the plan. We're going to try our very best, yeah. Um, yeah, we, we really, I know some people have asked us to go outside and do some things. We really, really want to do that. But the weather has been so good and so changeable, it makes it really difficult to do outside. But, <laughs> if we, but we'd we love are... to do it now, but the sun's in the wrong place for, the, for our garden, so we can't yeah, do it. But so even maybe we'll at, do it on the course. Even outside, can, yeah. yeah. Now we've got our proper mics. But um, So see you next week, same time, um, same place, 5 o'clock UK time. Uh, please like and share, as Julian says. And if you've got any friends that need help with their golf, um, please just um, let them know where we are and see what we can do with our best. Yeah, brilliant. Keep well, keep safe, yeah, guys. Take care, Lovely all the best, and you. enjoy your golf this week. Yeah, get out, out there. Take care, bye. Bye.